people who attack the free market in our time generally acknowledge that the free market is a superior system for producing wealth and leading to higher material standards of living. However, then they go on to ask the question, why is wealth a good thing? Why is it good to be prosperous? It is a bit saddening that such a question is even asked. For to many people, myself included, the answer seems obvious. It seems a matter of common sense, and it has seemed a matter of common sense since my earliest years. Virtually in every case where I have encountered somebody ask a question of why wealth is good, I have observed that that person has never truly experienced an absence of wealth, has never truly seen what a lack of the many good things we take for granted would actually entail. And it is useful to illustrate and discuss what a lack of such things would entail, so that perhaps we might appreciate the value of wealth all the more. Of course, everything I will say here presupposes one fundamental value, that is, the value of human life, the value of the life of every individual. But I do not believe that the value of every human life and the desirability of life is something that we need to prove here. Indeed, even by having this discussion, even by considering this question, we are already presupposing that human life is valuable. Because to have a discussion, to ask questions, to consider issues of morality, desirability, the good, we need to be alive in the first place. Now, if you truly do not believe that life is valuable, then there's no point for you to participate in this discussion or any discussion, and you have no need of morality as such. All you need to do to be consistent with your preference for death is die. If you keep arguing that death is more valuable than life, you are committing a contradiction. And this is not a contradiction that can be sustained. So, given that human life is desirable, why is wealth a good thing? Well, first of all, wealth offers us freedom from filth, disease, and misery. Most of us alive today we're not around to observe the conditions of life even at the turn of the previous century. However, consider what life would have been like without indoor plumbing, without a clean way to even dispose of human wastes, with human wastes being dumped out of the windows in major cities on the heads of passerby, with this filth multiplying, breeding diseases like typhus, cholera, and tuberculosis, which have been uh, largely contained and in some cases even eradicated in many parts of the world. Think about all the medical progress that was only made possible by the accumulation of wealth during the Industrial Revolution. Without the Industrial Revolution, without the major accumulations of wealth of that time, we would not have had antibiotics. We would not have had any kinds of effective treatments for cancer. We would not have had effective surgeries. The death rates in many hospitals in pre-industrial eras were up to 90%, if not more. Life expectancy at the turn of the previous century was a mere 47 years. Many of you watching this video today would likely have been dead at that time. And of course, without a formidable economic base, the world could not sustain nearly as large a population as it does today. By contrast, at the end of the 20th century, life expectancy had skyrocketed to 78 years, a much longer term, which is still steadily increasing. Furthermore, we have better nutrition right now. In 1776, writing The Wealth of Nations, Adam Smith boasted how the English common laborer had it so much better than the French common laborer, because the English common laborer could afford to eat a dose of fresh white bread every day and could afford to have a shirt on his back, whereas the French common laborer could afford to do neither. So if you want to live in a clean world, if you want to live in a world free of filth, free of rampant disease, free of foul smells, free of things that can kill you coming at you from every direction, as was the case in prior eras, then you will agree that wealth is good. Another thing wealth offers is freedom to grow intellectually. The vast 
access to information that we have today, the nearly free access we have to numerous texts, works of art, works of music, was not the case for most of human history. For most of human history, there wasn't even a printing press. Books had to be copied by hand, and only 30 to 40 copies of a particular book existed at most, and they were scattered amongst monasteries or noble homes. Very few common people even knew how to read, and even fewer had access to great works of literature. Today, over a thousand new books have been published in the United States alone, and the wealthier a country is, the freer it is economically and politically, the more books are published, the more works of art are made, the more works of music are made, the more freedom people have to grow intellectually or spiritually or emotionally. Why this is a bad thing in anyone's mind, I have no idea. Furthermore, commerce and the wealth that results from it makes us more moral people. It leads to greater tolerance among individuals of diverse religions, philosophies, worldviews. This has been known for at least three centuries. When he visited England in 1733, the French philosopher Voltaire observed the following. He wrote, go to the exchange in London, and you will see representatives of all nations assembled there for the profit of mankind. There the Jew, the Mohammedan, and the Christian deal with one another as if they were of the same religion, and reserve the name of infidel for those who go bankrupt. Now, throughout most of history, people have slaughtered each other over mere differences of ideology. The same Christians and Muslims and Jews in different eras would have fought holy wars, would have committed genocide, would have exterminated one another, and yet commerce has brought them together. The ability to trade value for value, the ability to recognize some common ground in members of other faiths and persuasions, irrespective of ideological differences, tempers these hostilities and gives people strong incentives to focus on the values that they share, the material values that could bring them together. This leads to so much greater toleration, a much more peaceful environment, an environment in which one does not have to fear for, for one's life because others believe that one has the wrong ideas. Voltaire made the following observation when comparing England, which was commercially free at the time, to France, which was strangled by a myriad of protectionist restrictions. And as a result, France did not develop a high degree of religious freedom. The Catholics and the Huguenots of France really saw no common ground with one another. They were not allowed to trade with one another freely. So all they had were their ideological differences that separated them. Voltaire wrote, if there were only one religion in England, there would be danger of tyranny. If there were two, they would cut each other's throats. But there are thirty, and they live happily together in peace. The only reason why religious toleration was even made possible in England, and why it subsequently has spread to the rest of the world, was because commercial freedom made it possible for people to find ways to interact with one another in a non-hostile, non-confrontational manner, to trade instead of to fight. And this really is the basic alternative in human relations. Do you seek to voluntarily, consensually exchange value for value, or do you seek to take things by force? If you choose the former route, that is the route of wealth. That is also the route of peace. And that, I believe, is the route of virtue. If you choose the latter route, you have chosen the course taken by m people in most of human history. But that is also the course that leads to chronic misery, pain, war, death, genocide, and the accompanying stagnation. Is that the kind of world you want to live in? You haven't really lived in that kind of world. Anybody who has will tell you it's a rotten way to live. So wealth is good. Please don't forget that. Please do not fight our material prosperity. Please do not take away from those who can enjoy the wealth and appreciate its value, the wealth that was so hard-earned throughout human history.